Hi, I'm Brian Whitens from the TV show Real Outdoors, filling in for Buck Lavasser. Join me as I climb aboard the Jody Lee with Captain Mitch of Shelter Bay Charters, along with one of America's premier guitar players, Dan Lawson of the Dan Lawson Band and his wife Brenda, along with local fisherman and president of Death Wish Lures, Ron Avery. We're on Lake Superior and heading for the Big Trout of Big Reef. And stick around for today's Only in the UP segment when we visit Otter Lake Campground in the Hiawatha National Forest for the annual Porky Bash, put on by the Porcupine Press. The event honors our veterans and active military and features a variety of bands, including the Dan Lawson Band. So sit back, put your feet up. It's Monday night and time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Today's show is brought to you by Hiawatha Log Homes, building dreams one home at a time. Wendrick's Trust, keeping the UP covered since 1975. It's early morning on Lake Superior. Waves that began countless miles away end their journey on the UP's northern shore. We're climbing aboard the Jody Lee with Captain Mitch Matson of Shelter Bay Charters. Mitch was born and raised on Lake Superior and has been taking people fishing here for more than 25 years. Shelter Bay Charters is located about seven miles west of Autrain on the shores of Lake Superior. The sun breaks the horizon and the UP's northern shore disappears behind us. Maybe I'm imagining things, but Lake Superior seems to have its own smell. It smells like big water. Clean, cold, deep, crystal clear water. Reminds me of lighthouses and stories of shipwrecks and big fish. Kind of the way the smell of suntan lotion instantly reminds me of a hot day on the beach. Our destination was one of Lake Superior's underwater mountains known as Big Reef. The crew includes one of America's premier guitar players, Dan Lawson of the Dan Lawson Band and his wife Brenda, along with local fisherman and president of Death Wish Lures, Ron Avery. Snap on some lures, drop the lines, and we're fishing. <laughs> Wow. Big Reef is located about 25 miles northeast of the dock in Shelter Bay. There are no distinguishing landmarks, no visible shorelines, just some colors on a screen. 120 feet below, rising up from the icy depths of Lake Superior, is the top of a 400 foot mountain, and it's covered with lake trout. Gotta get my gotta get my fishing legs under me. Oh. <laughs> hey, <Paella. laughs> I don't think he's liking me very much. I think he's seeing his boat. He's probably seeing you. That's a scary sight. <laughs> oh, it's a race, a race to the boat. <laughs> Beauty.
Have you been dreaming of owning a log home, cottage, or camp? We are Hiawatha Log Homes, proudly serving the UP and satisfied customers since 1983. Our in-house staff of professionals are ready to help you create the perfect log home plan. Visit our website or stop by our model home and meet our staff. From cottages to castles, we can custom design to your specific needs. Hiawatha Log Homes, building dreams one home at a time. This portion of today's show brought to you by Superior Welding and Manufacturing, a proud supporter of the outdoors. <laughs> That's a nice fish, huh? He's got to take that first lure off, so pull that right up. Pull it easy. Just, all right, now, real nervous. Shouldn't have them bolts back there. Now that's a nice fish. It's a nice chunk of fish there. That is a beautiful fish, dear. Look at that. Nice. Well, I knew we were due. Well, I've been fishing here since my family moved to the UP in the late 60s. And it's changed, you know, we used to get a lot more fish inshore, but there's still plenty of fish. I mean, they're a lot more natural reproduction, but lots and lots of fish. I mean, it, it, you pretty consistently get, get a nice catch. It's, you know, up down in the spring, we catch a lot of fish up shallow. Well, I got a strike on here now, so. We got one on here now. Oh, yeah. Autrine Bay, we get a lot of fish right up in 20, 30 feet of water in the spring around Memorial Day and before. And, and uh, then as the water warms, they move out a little offshore and catch fish more 100 to 140 feet of water. But there's a good lake trout population, not the fishing pressure that there used to be. Probably back through the 70s, there was, a, there was more pressure on them, but there's really good numbers and uh, lots of nice fish. This one we got coming right now is going to be a real nice fish. He's hit on that dodger and fly again. We've had a lot of fish on that purple and white fly today. It's been, uh, it's been hot. <laughs> I actually tied that one up myself. In fact, I was telling Mitch that same fly, I hope we don't lose it, it won the Marquette tournament last year in uh, September. <laughs> something about it i don't know what it is but that bugger caught an awful lot of fish for a year now and uh that old herring dodger i've got on there it's chartreuse with silver tape i bet it's 20 years old <laughs> they like it something about it we make the fly called the bug eye fly we sell it at, at uh, we wholesale to uh, gander mountain bass pro places like that some local business been tying flies since actually back in the late 60s and uh, marketing flies since the 80s. Most of our market is actually for salmon. They're all handmade, you know, right from our operation in Munising and uh, we don't import anything or you know, everything is assembled there and packaged and shipped in the whole nine yards. So it puts us at a bit of a competitive disadvantage to a lot of things that are imported, but if I have to go that route, I'm not interested in being in the business. Oh, that's a butase. Yeah. Dan Lawson's reputation as one of America's premier blues rock guitar players speaks for itself. Today we're out with uh, Captain Mitch and the crew of Extraordinaire putting you on fish. <laughs> He's a frequent performer at all major blues festivals throughout North America. 
as well as all major motorcycle events in North America. Massachusetts-based Dan Lawson Band is always a crowd favorite during Sturgis and Daytona Bike Weeks. <laughs> what was that? We'll be playing over at the uh, Porcupine Bash over at uh, Otter, Otter Lake. Dan has performed along with national acts like Kid Rock, Joe Walsh, Leonard Skinner, George Thurgood, Bloister Cult, Alice Cooper, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and Toby Keith. He's even performed the national anthem for former presidential candidate John McCain. Oh, and he can fish too. Being able to come up here and play music and go fishing. I mean, that's, uh, that's a gift. It's a great break. We've been on tour since March. We needed a break, so this works out really well. But uh, this is our second time out with Kevin Mitch. We've always caught great fish on the way out. So. the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carry-ins welcome. Kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Thanks, miss. That's a nice five pound coal there, Mitch. Ah, that's purity. Thank you. I thought he looked silvery back there. Yeah, they're terrible to eat. I'll throw that oh, one. Yeah, I'll throw that one away for you when I get back to my house. <laughs> back in the 80s. This time of year we catch our limit of cohos like that every day. Okay. They were about 20 feet down and about five. 40 to 50 feet of water. Yeah, five nice big four or five pound Excellent cohos. Eating fish. They're just not stocking them anymore, no. any degree. Rare to catch anymore? Pardon me? Are they rare to catch? Well, they're not rare. We catch quite a few in the spring, you know, right spring. through the ice and right after ice right. out, but no, there's just not a real good concentration of them that return anywhere. You know, Munising Bay, you do fairly good about the time the frost starts to come, right. you know, and the yeah. leaves are turning in late September, early October. Right. <laughs> We're off to the race, four fish on at once. He's just taking line, he's still not tired. You guys are making me sweat just watching you. I do. They're just <laughs> peeling more line. Oh, look at that beauty. Yeah, hurry up, honey, catch out, you got another one to grab. Oh, what a beauty. We got two others on. Mine just turned and went down again. Scoop. Okay, now, Brenda, there's one on over there. Oh, oh baby! There's one on over there, there's another one on here. Which one do you want? Take oh that one over there. Oh my God. Look at this, I get the lamprey still hooked to it. Yeah, that's a big one. Show Brenda the mouth on that guy. Wow. 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 That's a beauty. You know, when you look at, at where the salmon fishery is on Lake Michigan, from uh, the south end of the lake, Grand Haven, Holland, Muskegon, Ludington, Manistee, Frankfurt, Leland, you've got port after port there with, with a good salmon fishery and uh, a, a major charter fleet down there. So there's a lot more private boats, a lot more charters that, that can fish multiple tournaments 
and maybe only have to travel 10 or 15 miles by boat, you know, to where the tournament locations are. So that that just lends itself to a stronger tournament participation. It's difficult up here in a tournament to get uh, 40 boats is a lot. And uh, we do have a, a tournament out of Grand Marais in the spring. They put a 30 boat limit on it. And it's been pretty full the last couple of years. Another nice one. Fishing right here in the same area we're at now. Another nice belly fish. That tournament is like late June. Nice fish. And uh, there were some exceptional fish caught during that one this spring. Uh, there were several 20 plus, I think the biggest is around 27 pounds. And uh, Graham Ray just has a single slip to launch boats. Have to back up so bit. they have to restrict how many boats can be in the tournament. But it's an excellent, excellent tournament. And the Munising Spring Tournament here, we get a lot more salmon. Actually, we have more guys fishing for salmon than we do for lake trout. And there's pretty good king fishery in the bay, but for whatever reason, early June, they pretty well migrate out and uh, they're hard to come by after that time. And then a few show up again in the fall. So what are the what are the primary fish out of I mean besides the lake trout and the and the well, as far as biomass, I mean there's a lot of whitefish. A lot of whitefish, yeah. And a lot of herring. I mean, up in the west end of the lake they harvest a lot of herring up off like Grand Marais, Minnesota, up right. that area in the fall. Wow. They uh, ship the eggs to Sweden or somewhere for caviar. Oh boy. And there's a lot of whitefish, but they're more of a feeding on invertebrates and and some minnows, but you know, they're kind of an underslung mouth. They don't right. feed the same way. What you got there, babe? You got fishy? They're not really a aggressive predator type fish, so. Once yeah. in a while, somebody will catch one trolling, but it's not very common. Well, our great day of fishing on the largest of the Great Lakes was coming to a close. Lake Superior is a spectacular but unpredictable body of water. It can be as blue and peaceful as you could ever hope or it can deliver storms unrivaled by any other body of water but the ocean. Before my visit with Shelter Bay Charters, all who I spoke with said, no worries, Mitch will put you on the fish. And put us on the fish he did. Lots of fish. It seems all is not unpredictable on Lake Superior. Thanks, Mitch. Time for Only in the UP, the segment of the show that highlights the friendly, creative, crafty, and inventive spirit of those of us who live here. It's about that stuff that makes the UP the greatest place on earth to live. I paid a visit to the annual Porky Bash put on by the Porcupine Press, where I met up with one of the organizers, Robin Lindenberg. This is the Porcupine Bash, now at Otter Lake Campground. It's our third year of doing our bash, our salute to our military. We've got the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association of Michigan here, and they did a beautiful special salute ceremony for us. We can say, you know, we've got the good music, the good people, the great park. I love this place. Thursday, it's Thursday to Sunday. I eventually, we may be turning into a whole week. We'll see how it goes with that. That's our long-term plan. We've got people here from all over the country, though. Our first tickets were sold to a nice lady from Texas. We have friends and subscribers from Bayfield and lots of Wisconsin and Michigan here. Our volunteers are top-notch. We've got the best food vendors you could have. Otter Lake Campground is the perfect place for a party like this. The host has been extremely helpful and is all behind what we're doing and everybody's here because we appreciate our military and our veterans and all they do for us and our freedom. We'll be working more closely with the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association of Michigan in an effort to help our veterans in the homes and our homeless veterans. They're a great group of guys. They're here from all over the state. The commander's here from Flint. And um, they, they got the right idea of what we want to do, so it's a perfect partnership for distributing any funds that we can raise. The special flag that was raised today was presented to Jim and Donna Pepin by their son, PV2 Aaron Pepin, from the 1434th Engineer Company. And the flag was flown over the headquarters of the 101st Engineer Battalion on April 4th, 2010, in their honor during Operation Iraqi Freedom 9-11 at Camp Liberty. 
uh, one of the gals helping raise the flag, Kelly Howard. Kelly Howard, a 15-year veteran, um, got her purple heart for being blown up in a Humvee. The flag of the United States of America is hereby presented to Jim and Donna Pepin. And she also helped many of her fellow peers, uh, and she's an incredible lady. And we appreciate her being here and all that she's done for us. Jim and Donna Pepin's son wish was that it would be flown on American soil before it was retired. And Jim, when he heard that this was happening here, he was all excited. The first question we were asked was, could we fly this flag? And the answer, of course, was certainly. <laughs> oh, you've got Shotgun Kelly, who just won at the Hodag. Hips and Rico from Charlevoix were here. And we've got Archie, the Trinary Tubador. The Dan Lawson band from the Cape Cod area, he came to us straight from Sturgis. For information on um, Porcupine Bash 2013, you can go to porcupinebash.com. Our event will always be the third full weekend in August at Otter Lake Campground, and they are taking reservations now. A big thanks to Robin and the crew for taking care of me at the Porky Bash, and Mitch for a great day on Lake Superior. Fall is a great time to enjoy the outdoors in the UP, and bow hunting is a great way to do it. October 1st marked the beginning of archery season across the UP. The season runs through November 14th, then reopens after the firearm deer season for late archery hunting December 1st through January 1st. During the archery season, an archery license, combo license, regular tag or restricted tag can be used to harvest either an antlerless deer or qualifying buck. Antlerless only licenses are also valid during the archery season. In the UP, hunters cannot use crossbows after November 30th unless they have a disability permit. If you plan on hunting with a crossbow, you are required to have a crossbow stamp. The stamp is free and can be obtained when you purchase your license. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you here next Monday for another edition of Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. <laughs>